ladies and gentlemen. But again, the major thing, guys, I cannot stress this enough how many people make this mistake. Take a look at this. Make sure that your divisor is linear. Again, once we're what I'm about to go over with you is this is really important because this is, once the problems get a little bit more difficult, some students make the mistake. Make sure I, I always take my factor, or which is my divisor, and set it equal to 0. So if I have negative 5, then I take the coefficients 1, 3, negative 13, negative 15. Does everybody follow me? Is everybody OK? OK. Bring down the first term, 1. 1 times negative 5 is negative 5. 3 plus negative 5 is negative 2. Negative 2 times negative 5 is going to be negative 2 times negative 5 is going to be a positive 10. Negative 13 plus 10 is a negative 3. Negative 3 times negative 5 is a positive 15, 0. Now remember, that is your remainder. This is your constant linear quadratic. So my quotient, which is also called a f f factor, my quotient, which is also called a factor, is x squared minus 2x minus 3. Okay. Now, again, as I wanted to tell you guys, if this is a factor, what was my other factor? x plus 5. Now, is it totally possible if I said find all the solutions that I could set my factors equal to 0, right? Then can I continually factor these? Yeah. I could, factor, I could factor this down further into x minus 3 times x plus 1 equals 0. Could I now find all the factors? Yeah, by using the 0 product property, right? x equals negative 5, x equals 3, and x equals negative 1. That's three real zeros. How many zeros am I supposed to have? Three. So guess what? By using synthetic division, I can find the quotient, McKenzie, and then I can further factor down that to find the rest of the zeros because the quotient is a factor. However, that's not really the main purpose of what I wanted to go over. Over here, if you know what negative 5 is, you need to plug it in. So I said, if you have f of x and you plug in negative 5 cubed plus 3 times negative 5 squared minus 13 times negative 5 minus 15. So over here, we have negative 5 um, cubed. That's going to be negative 125. Uh, negative 5 times squared is going to be positive 25. So that's going to be plus 75. Negative 5 times 13, that's going to be 65, positive 65. Now, I could have done the work right or incorrect, but I know that the answer should have been 0. Okay. Now, does anybody have any idea of any relationships to that problem in the red compared to this problem in the blue? Just any type of connection that anybody sees. Yes, Anna, what do you see? What do you think? Anything. Anything. Yes, but, huh? They're different they are different colors. <laughs> that is correct. Yes. Yes. Josh. They are the same equation. But what I want you guys to understand, and yes, that kind of goes to the point. This is what I'm going to give you guys some definitions here in just a second. Um, but this is the application of the definition. If you guys look at this, here is your divisor. When you're taking your divisor, that is your 0, right? If you take your function, which is your dividend, if you take your dividend and evaluate it in for your 0, whatever you get as an answer is always going to be, always going to be the remainder of your equation. OK? So just, f, just for instance, what if I did f of negative 1? What do you guys think that remainder would be? Is negative 1 a 0? Yes, it is. x plus 1 equals 0, right? Set your factor equal to 0. x equals negative 1, right? x equals negative 1 is a 0. 
So if I did f of negative 1, what do you guys think my, I would, that would give me? Give you 0, right? It works. Does that right? kind of make sense for everybody? Kind of, más o menos? Yes? Remember, we can only apply when the x is raised to that first power. Oh, well, yeah. No, yes. If that is a 0, when you evaluate it for your 0, that will still give you 0. Yes. Doesn't matter. I mean, yeah, you yes. Anybody have any questions on this? No? So my question you guys comes into, 